Hello, and welcome back to Zim Explorer. I'm Dr. Abstract, and in this Zim Explorer, we're going to take a look at audio sprites and how to use them and prepare the data for them. Okay, let's go to the, well, let's go and take a look at an example app that we're making that uses the audio sprite. So let's see. Here is Dazzlefinger. Wow. All right, so we can hit uh, Dazzle and have a listen. Ooh. So we've got a backing sound, and that's uh, not using the audio sprite, although it could. But all of these sounds... There's success. Those sounds are all from Audio Sprite. So there's a bunch of different ones. Very nice, yay! Okay, so let's close this down. F11. And we'll go and take a look at how we did that. So here is the index page of Dazzle Finger. And what we've decided to do here is make the images. So here are the images for Dazzle Finger. Since you can't actually start the sound until they interact, we may as well uh, load the images at the beginning. Once the images are in, then we're calling a separate frame.load assets to bring in the audio sprites because they're, they're all the sounds, they're a bit more. Uh, they're larger in size, so they take a bit longer to load. We didn't have to, but this would optimize it. And so uh, basically we're doing a sound check, and we are not going to play sounds unless we have a sound check. So there's a few different things that we're doing to make sure that they can start those sounds correctly. You have to interact with the, the app before the sounds can play. And yet we also have a toggle on the sound, so it's a bit tricky because if we press on the toggle, then we don't that's an interaction, but we don't actually want to play the sound at that point. Usually we do a, a sound right here on a mouse down. So as soon as you stage that mouse down, then we can turn on the sounds. And we're playing background or whatever. But that's just checking to see if we're pressing on the toggle or not as we do that. Anyway, uh, here's the Zim audio sprite data. And there's the backing sound, which we didn't include in the audio sprite data. The idea behind an audio sprite data is that it's a bit quicker to load for mobile because it's all one uh, one object that they're they're loading. But it's okay to load two objects, for instance. But if you have 20 sounds or something, it's a bit more efficient to put them all in a single sound and load that single sound. So uh, once we have all of that Zim audio sprite in, we're given the names of, of them. Let's see, that's the backing sound. So chime, bubble, reverse, sparkle, hump, all that was put in the data and we're about to go look at the data and how we built that data. So we get this, these nice little IDs for them. We're then storing those IDs. Uh, we're making an odd from it, like a, an audio object from them. And note that we're also setting the volumes as we do that there. And we're storing them in these variables that are available outside of our load. And that allows us to down below in the code in the various places then call the odd. Let's just do a search on odd, A-U-D. Yeah, found those ones, great. And <laughs> still found those ones. Oh, right. They're no longer called AUD down below. They're called bead bubble sounds. So we'll do a look for there. There's the bead bubble sound. So when something happens, we take the bead bubble sound and we play it. And there's a bead sound. Else we're playing a bead sound. So there's a variety of places in here where we're doing a play. I guess that would be a search for a play. Complete bubble sound. Complete sound dot play. Um, how we've got it is we have a toggle button. So if that toggle is on, so that will, when we toggle it on, it makes sound check to true. Then we play the sound. 
And that way we can toggle off all the sounds and not play them if the user doesn't want them to be played. Okay, that's that. And where do we get this data from then? Right up at the top then, back here. Uh, we are loading in from assets, the Zim audio sprite data, but let's see, what is that again? Um, oh, okay, it must be coming from this data.js file. Yeah, so up here, as it says right below here, <laughs> Zim audio sprite data comes from the data.js file. So we have a variable in the data.js file, which is in the same folder. We've just taken our data and put it out here. We have a bunch of paths, and that's the data for the paths. And we've also put the Zim audio sprite data out here. You don't have to. You could put this right in a frame call, for instance. You could take that, stick it in the frame call as, as an asset. The source is dazzle.mp3. So that's inside of the assets folder. There's a dazzle.mp3 right here. And that dazzle.mp3 has all of the sounds played in order. So here are the IDs for those sounds that we've made up ourselves. The Zim format of an audio sprite, so this is a Zim format of an audio sprite, has the starting time and the stopping time in seconds. Start time, stop time in seconds. This is probably the most simple audio sprite, as far as we can tell anyway. <laughs> so CreateJS has a version of what an audio sprite data would be like, and it involves object literals and a bit more complex. And there's also, if you if you take a look in the docs, there's other versions as well. Why don't we open up the docs and sec. Uh, right. So there's the docs and audio sprite. I should have prepared. Uh, there's another thing that we can do with audio sprites, and that is test them. So this is parse audio sprite. That's not quite what we were looking. Well, actually, this might have the format here as well. It's got a JSON. It didn't talk. Black ball start ends. Yeah. So this looks like. Uh, there's this other site right here that has its own audio sprite data example as well. So this looks like one resources, and then it's got the resource, it's got a sprite map, and then the label, and then starts and ends, and whether you want to loop. We don't need to worry about that though. Okay, so that's similar. And there's also a CreateJS format as well. Uh, we can take all, all of those formats and we'll transpile them into a CreateJS format, and that's what goes into um, the actual asset loading is a CreateJS format, because we use CreateJS preload, preloading for that. But the Zim, Zim version is pretty easy. Is that the only place we've got audio sprite? Uh, pre, well, preview audio sprite as well. This is the one that I was perhaps, uh, maybe I could dig up. We, we did make a preview file for this. If you run this command right here, preview audio sprite, then what it does is it makes a list of tabs across the top that have the labels here. And when you press the tab, you hear the sound. And so that can be good to sort of remember which sounds you have and choose, to choose certain sounds for certain things. All right, so anyway, that's a bit of um, background on that, but this is the Zim audio format. It's pretty straightforward. You just say the, the label start and end. So how do we get these times then? Okay, that would be, we did it in Premiere right here. <coughs> so we, cop, we, we with, with Premiere, you start up a new, uh, new file, new project, I guess it's called, and you can pick up the MP3s or the WAV files. I think these were WAV files. You can just pick them all up and drop them right into a timeline, and they'll go blah 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 one after another. Probably most sound software as well. There's also sound. Adobe's got oh, what do they call their sound project? Or I can't remember some strange name. But anyway, Adobe's got a sound tool as well. 
uh, and most sound tools, if you just put all of them into a file, they'll, they'll probably do this as well. And then what we're wanting to do is find out their start time and their end time. So in Premiere for that, it, we can scrub, scrub this thing and hit the, hit the start time and the end time. So how we turn the times on are twofold here. One is in this little guy. I don't know if you have Premiere, but we have show audio time units. So that's checked on right there. And then if you right click here, we've chosen milliseconds because that's what we're wanting. Sometimes these things show in frames and it's a bit odd. It's like seconds in frames or something like that. It's strange. But now we're in milliseconds, and so it becomes quite easy to just go to the beginning of this of this third one and say it's at 3.711. And then the end of it, wherever you want to end, is at 6.7. And you'll see here in the data, 3.711. We decided to end it a bit before 6.7, and so that's, that's sort of up to you. You, you listen to it. So here they are and kind of say, yeah, that's done <laughs> and say that would be a good ending because you don't need sometimes the sound has look, it's got all this extra space in it. You don't need that. Isn't that fun? All right. So how do we um, how to preview those? Maybe I can look up and find the file where we did a preview on these various magical sounds. Uh, OK. Oh, desktop reveal. Desktop reveal. What do we want in this desktop reveal? How about, oh, we don't want that one. We want this one. Boop. And let's see, did I put it right in here? Test.text? Mm, no. Uh, there's the index. Maybe I put it in, I think I put it under an audio sprite folder. Uh, AU audio sprite. Dazzle, yeah, okay. So um, you can also store this as a JSON file, but you don't have to. So, so Dazzle there, that's the Dazzle MP3. And here is the Dazzle.html. So we'll open that up. Hey, it's got that stuff all selected just the same way as our data almost did. Okay, so that's almost the same stuff. It looks like maybe to be add something more. No, we just added these comments probably. All right, so there's our same data. We have our frame here, and here we are loading right in the frame call. We, we're just going to load it right away, our Zim Audio Sprite data. It's in the Assets folder. Or it's not, it's right here, but the Dazzle inside there is in the Assets folder. If this were in the same folder, your MP3 is in the same folder, you wouldn't need to, to have the assets there. Or indeed, I suppose you could probably stick the asset slash in front of that too, and it would have been fine. But there we go. And then let's have a look and see what this gives us. Open the default browser. So there they are. We we adjusted that a little bit. Note that we put eight there. If we didn't put eight there, the Zim Audio Sprite just puts a few of those along there. So three it takes the first three letters and sticks it on there. But uh, we want, we have, we made this purposely uh, wider. The reason why it's like that is note that this is 2000. Uh, 1024 is our default size. And then if you did 1024, it would look like this. And three was sort of a good number to have there. So you could sort of guess at what that was that matched. But another way around that, if you want to see more words on there, there's a couple ways you could make the tabs. Oh, the tabs aren't in there anyway. So the easiest way probably is just make this longer, 2000. And then what do we have here? Eight or something. We, we asked for eight characters. And now it's longer and we can see that we can read most of this. Elastic, Woo! ascend. Charm. Reverse. That's when we take away points. We used reverse. Isn't that cool? Anyway, so that allows you to uh, check out the sounds and the names. 
in the past, what we've done is we've reused sounds a lot and we've gotten used to the names of the sounds. Um, and so there, there we have a common set of very digital sound, eight bit kind of sounds like power up. And we've reused that for many projects. And instead of changing the names of the sounds there, we usually leave them the same. This is a brand new set. I can see using this set of sounds again in the future. But it's, uh, it's kind of nice to just be able to match a, a rebound sound or something to what you want to do in your new app. Maybe it doesn't really relate to rebound. So it's, you know, it's sometimes um, tricky to keep everything in mind. But uh, this, this little app right here, the way that we do the preview audio sprite helps. And ladies and gentlemen, that has been uh, what's bubbling in Zim. Oh no, it's an explorer. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> got so many of these series. We've also got lots of other series here at Zim and you can explore those as well. Uh, things like the bubbling, that's all what's new. We have basic coding videos, under the hood videos, code in five minute videos. There's lots. All right, have a great day or night. Come and join us at zimjs.com slash slack, zimjs.com slash discord. Cheers.